Knowles News! It's Knowles News! Uh, London. Have I got news for you? Um, any bother coming over and all or at you? You got over here, okay? I am. Um, yeah, I went to Hollyhead. Did you? <laughs> Did, you? No, I didn't get the boat. That's just where Ryanair fuck you out. <laughs> <laughs> we got the boat. You got the boat? To, to, from Rosslair. And I say we because I brought Johnny Two Stroke with me. No way. Where is he? Do you know Johnny Two Stroke? He suffers from premature ejaculation. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> we, um, we got talking to this English one in the boat, and we were giving her the big chat like, and she said she was a model. And Johnny said he was the biggest contractor in Ireland. And I said I hurled senior for AC Milan. <laughs> Did she? I wouldn't let her best me. I said it's myself and Zabby Alonso and a two man from forward line. Did she buy it? I'm sure she didn't know he played midfield, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so Johnny Two Stroke got he got her into the toilets anyway and she says the game was over before the ball was thrown in, you know what I mean? So he destroyed her good suit. He <laughs> So anyway, I got her to give us a lift as far as Swansea and I tell you it was one awkward car journey. Go ahead. Well, she couldn't understand how Ireland's biggest contractor and a sports star couldn't afford the bus. <laughs> and I said, shut up the fuck or Johnny will come with you again. <laughs> <laughs> right, this hasn't been recorded, is it? Um, no, 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 you're safe I enough tonight. ASA. <laughs> <laughs> the sponsors are gone, lad. <laughs> now look, Leia Healthcare just walked out the fucking door. <laughs> that man, he's like a pot of tea on a stove. He's just constantly below the boil, okay? Then from Swansea to Cardiff, we got a raft made entirely out of boxes of fags. <laughs> Anyone here from Wales? No, well that, that place is like the UK's answer to Offaly. <laughs> I think Wales have a better chance of winning the All-Ireland though. <laughs> <laughs> ha! 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 <laughs> then in Cardiff, right, right we, we got a slab of cans and we got an old sing song going. And Johnny, in fairness to him, he reenacted Eamon de Valera's speech from the film Michael Collins. <laughs> and he was there, and, and he was flaming out this stage, and he was, freedom can only be achieved through blood sacrifice. And it just was brilliant. <laughs> now, everyone else on the bus was like a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it very good. <laughs> now, I don't trust public transport at the best of times. <laughs> public transport? Yeah. It's too dangerous. Causing the mine. <laughs> Causing the mine. <laughs> <laughs> he got on public transport one day. He got on public transport one day, and he never came back. That's <laughs> <laughs> a fact. That's <laughs> a fact, by his dangerous, walking out your front door, by his dangerous business. So, I had to get a taxi then, and um, a man dropped stuff outside, and he said, that's 20 euro. And I said, they only have 19, reverse. <laughs> Now, I'm going to give you my first news story. Because we're in a big city, a study has been released about the dangers of living in a big city. Uh, this obviously doesn't apply to the lads from Carlo who will just die of boredom. <laughs> this study monitored 7,000 adults living in America. And it said, urbanites, I've got to hit them, Dermot had them, he had to get the re fucking house re-roofed. <laughs> <laughs> they were exposed to more ozone, and just nobody wants to be in the ozone. So the Carmel was doing the washing one day, and 
she pulled out a strange pair of knickers out of my jacket, and I said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so no fella wants to be in the O oh zone. <laughs> um, a surprising way that living in a city can make you less clever. It said, performance in a big test is affected by the air pollution. Now, you see, this study was carried out in America, where they think the capital of England is Mary Poppins. <laughs> and wait, it said, it is thought that air pollution can alter the body's metabolism. I actually left mine at home. Be all right. Your for metabolism? I left it at home for the weekend. I fucked it. Couldn't be kind of around. <laughs> then... It said we, it can also cause you to put on weight living in a city. Now, this was carried out in America, obviously, where they think ketchup is a vitamin. <laughs> so living in a city can be dangerous. But the Irish lads here, it is your fault. He built them. <laughs> he built all the cities. <laughs> but the positives of living in a city, I think, is the people you meet. And I worked in London for a spell back in the 80s. And we, we had a big Jamaican lad on the site with us now. And Fuck where sake. would I meet one of them? Do you know what I mean? He was a gas man. And he was, he was always giving out about the pants, you know, the smocks they used to give us. And he'd say, hey, man, you know. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> he'd, s- oh. he'd, say, he'd say, do you know the way your lad to be hitting off your knee? I said, what? <laughs> I said, me young lad. <laughs> Fucking think I am. Tommy Two Hammer or something. But <laughs> Do you remember Tommy Twohammer? <laughs> no, no. Jesse was on the building side of home and he had a tool belt on. And he had only one hammer on the tool belt, but it was the second hammer do the damage, I'll tell you that now. <laughs> <laughs> drive a nail just to drive your aunt to the airport. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to say be careful living in a big city, right? <laughs> now, my second story of the week. It's that time of year again. You've had a great summer. You were stacking bales, drinking pints, riding, fighting, driving combine harvesters. But now, you have to go back to school. (laughs) And this story takes place where they (laughs) hunt lions, they run with the wildebeest, (laughs) home of the Maasai warrior. It is, of course, Glasgow. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. In, in Glasgow, now they might sound like they're speaking Swahili, but it's, it's actually English mixed with vodka. <laughs> Glasgow, I said, Glasgow, don't go. <laughs> no, I hear, I hear it is lovely, but a safer option to see the wildebeest would be Kenya. In Kenya this week, this is a fact now, this is news, a young one went back to school and she got in big trouble. Big trouble when she went back to school. Now, she wasn't smoking fags and giving hand jobs like Ross Gray now. It's just. <laughs> oh, Jesus. She got in trouble for her hair. She had. <laughs> well, that's the height of ignorance. I'll tell you. <laughs> in your own time there. This woman went back to school and she had dreadlocks, right? And the school went mad. Now, there wouldn't be too many lads around Kilbrine with dreadlocks. No, no. I wouldn't be too familiar with it. There was one lad. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> there was one lad who came back with dreadlocks, right? He got trapped down a cave. <laughs> if I have to come down to you. <laughs> I repeat. A young lad got trapped down a cave. (laughs) See, when we were young, he used to go into the cave, and there was a big hole, right? And you used to try and push the other fellow down into the hole. And that was the game of cave. (laughs) (laughs) A good few lads died. (laughs) But this was before our smartphones, so you had to entertain yourselves. We used to be out playing with the sheep and the ponies and, <laughs> and killing people. Well, I mean, we used to throw stones at the ducks. <laughs> and that was the game of ducks. <laughs> <laughs> and one lad, he survived to fall into the cave. And he was only a baby at the time. 
<laughs> and his parents didn't miss him because they barely had enough work for the kids they had. <laughs> so this baby, <laughs> this baby of a man, this <laughs> <laughs> he was raised in the cave by the bees. <laughs> Oh my God. And he lived on honey and stones. <laughs> and the bees, bees taught this young lad how to fly. <laughs> and when he was strong enough, he flew out of the cave to freedom. <laughs> and that boy grew up to be <laughs> Sting. <laughs> As a fact. Ah, oh, fucking hell. Sting. <laughs> the only man in the parish to have dreadlocks. <laughs> and I don't see him around anymore. I think he joined the guards. <laughs> <laughs> I lived out with you. <laughs> so this young one in Kenya, anyway, right? The school said she can't have dreadlocks. And they wanted her to shave her head. That's a fact. And her father took the school to the high court because he was a Rastafarian. And he wanted to get high. And the court ruled in Kenya that Rastafarianism is a religion and should be treated like any other one. So she has the right to an education and she'll be allowed to wear her dreadlocks to school. Isn't that great? That's great, yeah. She has, she has to cover him with a turban, which should be roasting, but that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's... That is the rule of the court, and do not too many lads around kill Brian wearing turbans either. There's <laughs> one lad is after wearing skinny jeans. That's about as far as we've got. <laughs> but uh, that is my second story of the week. And lads... <laughs> <laughs> 